Gladys Wodehouse, and I just played an excerpt from a short piece by the famous French composer named Louis Vierne. He wrote this for harmonium, and it's also playable on the pipe organ. The instrument I played on is a small European harmonium built in 1901 by the firm Katakiewicz. And here is a picture of the label. It's very beautiful. And it says that this instrument was built in Vienna. Now, Katakiewicz is not a German name, but the founder of the company came from the Ukraine and settled in Vienna, then a major world capital of culture and art, and created a company that built beautiful harmoniums, very large ones, right down to small, simpler ones, because there was a market for these instruments during the late 19th century going into the 20th century. Of course, these instruments are not being built anymore. They fell out of fashion, although they're being now revived in Europe very significantly and also in the United States. Now, what is a harmonium of this sort? Since you don't see them very often here in the United States. Well, it's an instrument that's in the same family with the accordion and the harmonica and, of course, the Indian harmonium that people do know about here in this country now. It's an instrument that uses what you call free reeds, made of metal, and they are housed inside a little, little, little case where there's space around the tiny, tiny little reed. And when you apply air, force air into it, it will make a musical tone. Now you notice this one is a tiny one. These are very delicate, these little reeds. And that's true for all these instruments, the harmonica, the uh, accordion, and of course the European harmonium. They're very delicate and uh, they can be tuned actually. Here's one that is a big one. This one is a low note. They vary in size according to pitch. And they're arranged in sets. And when, uh, let me take as an example, the accordionist goes back and forth, they create an air source that can be forced through a reed when the accordionist plays a note. Now, in similar fashion, this instrument, my Katakiewicz, when you pull a stop, it opens up a channel where all those reeds are laying there, and the air can be forced into that channel and when you play a note, press a note, you get sound. Now the other thing that you can do, you can make your sound loud or soft depending on how much air you force through the reeds. So I'm going to go from soft to loud. to play loud and soft at will is at the heart of expressive playing, which this instrument is perfect for. My Katakiewicz was probably intended for home use. Music lovers would have it for their own private entertainment, or they might have had a small music salon to invite people to, or this instrument could be used in a small church or chapel. It would not be used in a concert hall or in a large church. There are much larger harmoniums intended for those, those purposes. It has 61 notes and middle C is right here. It has 12 sets of stop poles. These stop poles 
have mechanical and tonal features that create possibilities for the performer to add color and expression. The instrument has what you call a split point between E above middle C and F above middle C. The notes from E down are controlled by these five stops here. The notes from F all the way up are controlled by these stops here. So you have to pull two stops on either side to get the whole instrument playing. To get a lie of the land of this instrument, I would like to just review the stops and a little bit about each one. The first and most important stop on this instrument, the, the grounding pitch of the instrument that when you play, when this stop is pulled, the note middle C is the same as your middle C on a piano. On the left, it has the number one, and it's called cor anglaise, English horn, and underneath it says percussion. On the right, it's called flute, and it also has the word percussion. Now, what was percussion? Percussion was a device that was invented by the French organ builders to make it possible for the reeds inside of the first stop to sound a little bit more quickly. Because when you force air through a reed, it takes a little bit of time to get the reed to vibrate, unlike a piano, which is instantaneous. So they devised a way of putting little tiny hammers over each one of these 61 notes, if you have both stops pulled, and the hammer will hit the reed, bing, and it will speak a little more quickly. Now here's what the percussion sound like themselves. You'll hear the little hammers hitting the reed without any tone being pushed in through the air. That device is fantastic because what it does is it enables you to play fast pieces rapidly with a lot of clarity. And it's also a kind of color itself. So this instrument has percussion. It's a great addition to it. Moving on to stop two. In the bass, it's called bourdon, which is derived from terminology associated with a, with a pipe organ. Number two in the right hand, it's called clarinet. This is a set of reeds that sound an octave lower than what you would read in a published sheet music. So if you remember what middle C sounded like here, here's what the bourdon sounds like. It's an octave lower, and then you just go down, and finally it plays very low, and you can hear how slow it takes for that very long read to be activated to sound. This set of reeds is, has a slightly different tonal characteristic. It's darker, it's duskier, it's probably louder, and the French writers for the instrument didn't necessarily exploit it because of its low range, although they, of course they did, but because it has a different color characteristic, they would set some music with at using the number two stop higher just to get the tonal difference between two and one or two and three or four or five, whatever. So that was not only a lower pitch, but also a different tonal color. Number three is Vox Celeste, and it's called that on both sides. Now, here's what it sounds like. Now, vox celeste means heavenly voice. And I don't think that's a heavenly voice. It's nice, but it's not heavenly. The way you get it to sound like real vox celeste is you pull one.
Why does it sound like that when the two are pulled? It's because number one and number three are tuned very slightly differently. So there are beats of the tones hitting each other and it's causing that wavering sound and a, a rich sound that is the glory of this instrument and I'll demonstrate it in repertoire later. On the left, you have the Sourdine. Now the Sourdine is the same set of reeds from E down as the number one, which is the Cor Anglaise. The difference is that the Sourdine has almost like a blanket put on the number one reeds, so it just sounds softer. And it's a great little device if you're playing beautiful melodies in the treble and a very simple background in the bass to use the sourdine because it'll be quieter and allow the melody to stand out. All right, so here it is with just the sourdine by itself. Now here's what number one sounds like, which is the same set of reeds, but doesn't have that little blanket on it. It's just a little bit different. But that's the point of this instrument. It's a subtle instrument, and you can use this very effectively for very detailed, expressive performance. Over here, you have not a sourdine, but you have the tremblant, which is controlling notes going from the F all the way up. And what the tremblant is, it's not a new set of reeds, but it's the number one set of reeds, the flute, that's subjected to a mechanical device that causes the note to repeat rather rapidly, depending on how much air you put into a note that you play when the tremblant is pulled. And what it does is imitates human vibrato. That is that, that business in the voice that goes, ah. And uh, you hear it in opera singers, but you hear it in the natural, untrained voice too. So here's what the tremblant sounds like on this instrument. I just get it going pretty good. My tremblant's a little noisy sometimes, but what happened is, as you probably noticed, the louder I played, the slower the tremblant repeated the note. So when you're using the tremblant expressively on a melody in the, in the treble, you have to be very aware of that and uh, gauge your performance accordingly. On the left and on the right, you have the forte. This is Again, not this is what you would call a mechanical device. It doesn't actually make sound itself, but it affects other things in the instrument. In this case, with the forte, when you pull it on the side, on this side, on the left side, anything you play using any one of these uh, stop pulls on the left, they'll play louder than stops pulled on the right if the right hand one is not pulled. Conversely, if you pull a forte here, these stops will play a little louder than these stops. And if you pull them both, the instrument sounds louder than, than it would if they weren't pulled. So it's a little slight uh, dynamic modification that's, again, very, very useful if you're trying to develop a detailed, expressive performance. Up here, you have the expression. Now this is the, the heart and soul of the, uh, the great harmonium builder's art. They found a way to mechanically modify airflow, and it's rather technical, in such a way that your feet can control very rapid changes from loud to soft, and you can add quick accents. So again, it's no uh, surprise that it's called expression because it allows you to give wonderful rhetoric to your performance. Here we have the Guanjou, great play. And 
what this stop does when you pull it is that all the uh, all the reeds sound in a very grand way <laughs> that's useful uh, but it's it's tricky to pull and not not just that but you might be wanting to use it very rapidly in other words you might want to pull grand jeu when you're playing number one in order to introduce grand jeu very quickly and having to pull it and push it back very quickly is quite cumbersome so this instrument has a little lever here between my knees that allows me to trigger grand jeu when I'm playing along like this see how that works so that's a wonderful device you use it as appropriate